What is up guys and girls, Hurricane Liz here and in this video we're going to break down a reply we had from Empire Flippers in regards to our video that talked about selling your KDP business. So I think those of you that are interested in selling your business have got to pay attention to this. Even those of you that never thought in your wildest dreams you could sell a KDP business for big money have got to pay attention to some of the tips and some of the things he said I was spot on about as well as some of the things that he disagreed with me about. So I'm super fired up to do this video. I hope you're fired up. Let's go and do this. All right, so here's the response and I've broken it apart into several different pieces because obviously it was a good, well thought out response and I just wanted to make sure that I devoted a whole video to this because a lot of people out there have been asking, Liz, can I really sell my business? And my answer was absolutely. I can even put some bad words in there, but I'll choose not to. But let's go ahead and see what an expert that has done hundreds of millions of dollars in sales responded to my video that I did a couple weeks back. So Empire Flipper says, hey Liz, glad you enjoy our marketplace. It's a great place to get inspired at what is possible even if a person's plan isn't acquisition just yet. First off, I agree with the general premise you're saying here, a brand focused approach, usually in the pen name for KDP businesses is the correct path typically. And you'll note that that's what I typically recommend people do here on this channel is focus on a brand niche approach, not only to get a long-term sales plan in place, meaning long-term you're looking at an acquisition, but also because of the fact that once you establish one solid character, guess what? People start to buy subsequent volumes of whatever you put out on that character. I always tease people about Bluey. I say he's a polygamist and he can create two, three different families and sell four to eight to 12 different books just based off of the different families he's got in those books. I also talk about Little Blue Truck and Sammy the Little Bird. Sammy can take a dump and guess what? People flock to buy that bird's dump book. So let's keep talking about what else Empire Flippers says here. You do see some of the shotgun approach working well still, but I think for long-term solid growth, having a niche focus for each successful pen name or handful of pen names is the way to go, which is what I've basically been saying here, rambling on and on about on this channel. So at least it feels good when an expert agrees with you. I'm going to pat myself on the back. I think I did a good job there. All right. So here's what Empire says. I love the KDB business model. I view it as kind of the modern day publishing house, which he is correct. For those of you that have not started your very own publishing house, this is your opportunity. You can sign up for KDP free. It's not like merch. You don't have to get approved. That's a fantastic part. So brand new people, you still got a shot to do well in this market. So here's part two of what Empire Flipper says. Overall, your analysis on our listings are good, but there are some missing elements here. So Smart people, pay attention here because he's about to talk to you about what I missed out on saying and that's pretty rare when I miss out on something. For example, on the throwing shit against the wall to see what sticks, I wouldn't really say that is true for the business listing. There is the element of truth in that most entrepreneurs are doing some rendition of that before they find something with traction they can scale up. But as you get above say 2K per month, that kind of mentally tends to go away in favor of focusing on what is working. So I think a lot of what he says is true. I still feel that um, to some degree, these people that are selling, I think he's right. They already found that thing that works, particularly like he said, when it gets to 2K per month, then I usually tell you guys, throw a bunch of shit at the wall at first. When you find something that sticks, then start focusing on that and keep bringing stuff out for that particular thing. And so, yeah, I could see that I missed that. I still feel that if the entrepreneur themselves is still trying to scale the business up, they'll still sh throw random shit at the wall. And sometimes they'll find new things that stick, which allows them to create additional pen names and keep moving forward and keep expanding. But maybe a lot of these people are at the point where they just really want to sell. I mean, let's face it, there has to come a point where we grow bored of the current business model that we're doing. I grow bored all the time. That's why I create brand new experiments on how to make money online on this particular channel. But let's continue. And here he continues to say, I think this may be more of a fault on our end in that the listing for not mentioning that they have pen names to and that they have outlined SOPs. For those of you that don't know, SOPs are standard operating procedures. They show you how to do the business model step by step in a very picturesque format so that people that take over the business in the future and their VAs will know exactly how to run the business step by step. And what he's alluding to here is the fact that on a lot of the listings, I called out that there was no mentioning of SOPs whatsoever. So that made me think, hmm, maybe there's not SOPs, but let's go ahead and continue. Of course, all that more intimate information is shared with anyone who unlocks the business. And if your crowd is interested in just using the marketplace for some inspiration, I'd highly recommend getting a free marketplace account registered as you'll get some more insights and better filtering options. So obviously, there are some listings that don't tell you upfront that SOPs are included, 
but in almost any big time sellable business, SOPs are a must because they will show the brand new owner how to take it over smoothlessly and flawlessly. So I do recommend if you are creating your very own KDB business that you plan to sell in the long run, you should get started in creating standard operating procedures. If you don't know what that is, let me know below and I'll be more than happy to make some videos on how my team internally creates SOPs, including the way I never have to lift a single finger to make an SOP ever. It's absolutely genius and i'll be honest i've never made a single sop ever i repeat that again so let's see what else empire says kdp businesses in particular really need solid sops if they want a good chance to sell it's a more esoteric business model and so much of the value is the system that the entrepreneur created versus say the raw traffic that might be the main allure for by for someone buying an affiliate site so he's absolutely right not Everyone generates traffic the same way with KDP. I've talked about how to run ads. I've talked about running external traffic like Facebook. And there's even other ways to promote like email lists. But in order to be able to show someone how to take this business over, run it smoothly and continue to make money and expand, you need to show them how to do it step by step. And that is where an SOB comes into play. And it's also where an SOP becomes a vitally important just to make money in general. Here's another thing that they say. Another thing to be aware of is for a smaller KDB business, you may still have a very solid and prominent pen name. While that is an important piece of the puzzle, it's not the end all be all. For example, you could have a very prominent pen name in a niche that brings in only one to two K per month, but is super well known. But the reasoning why so little is brought in despite that could be tied to niche selection, marketing, book output, and all kinds of other variables. So don't be afraid if your biggest pen name is only bringing a limited amount of money, it's still very important. And again, like I said, a pen name is branding. So Jade Summer, we all have come to know Jade Summer very well. And when we see a book coming out from Jade Summer, we know that there is not a central focused artist. There's no such person as Jade Summer. I mean, maybe it did begin at Jade Summer, but we don't even know that. However, they have a group of artists to create books for them but the name is very well known and the name is what is focused as the brand it's not necessarily a character it's the name like I don't know off the top of my head who the hell writes Bluey or the little blue truck or Sammy the bird or Dogman or any of those things I just know the characters so those are brand focused character themes however name is also a big deal like Jade Summer all right and let's look at a couple of the last two comments that Empire says so I wouldn't say business at a lower value instantly must have a worse pen name or worse brand that they may even have a better brand than businesses with much higher valuations and that better brand usually can translate into a better multiple which means more money right if you have a business at say 100K with a 43 multiple versus a 500K business with 31 multiple, one of the things that could make that happen is that the smaller business does indeed have a solid brand that they just haven't scaled yet, yet for whatever reason. It often boils down to time, not the inability to scale it. Many KDP entrepreneurs in particular have many side projects or other businesses. And yeah, I very much agree with them. I've come into a bunch of instances where I have friends that sold their brands and if they had scaled out that brand on social media and other platforms, they'd have gotten a far better multiple however they chose just to take the money right then and there and run and just get paid and stop running the business altogether so a lot of good points let's go and see what he concludes with in general though you're right better brands does create better value to the point that it is almost impossible to sell a business over 500k that doesn't have a decent brand at the level buyers are truly looking for more systems of leverage rather than just pure cash flow plays and a super solid brand is one of the best potential levers they'll have when they take over a business and start scaling it aggressively thanks for featuring us in the video appreciate it and hopefully we see a ton of new awesome modern day publishing houses listed on the marketplace to keep inspiring entrepreneurs with. I agree 100%. I'm still always telling you guys to focus things on the brand and that that is how you will have a better and bigger payout. So I do apologize for not maybe thinking that there were SOPs available on the back end, but if you do want a more intimate look at some of these actual brands available for sale, I know what you need to do, then I do encourage you to sign up for their service, there's free marketplace account. That's how I do all the research for these videos. And that's how I understand that the power of a brand is one of the best things that you can have working for you, as well as good standard operating procedures so that the brand new owner will know that they can take over the business easily, flawlessly, and know exactly what they have to do in order to either scale the business or keep it running. So if you haven't started that, I highly recommend you do. It's pretty simple. I can show you how to do it without ever having to do an SOP yourself. Just let me know in the comments below and also let me know what your questions and or comments are about this video. Other than that, thanks so much and I'll see you all on the next video.